The circulatory system is both ingenious in design and amazing in performance. It consists of four components, the heart, blood vessels, blood, and lymph vessels. These four components work together to accomplish two important tasks, deliver oxygen and nutrients to and remove waste products from every cell in the body. At the center of the cardiovascular system is the heart. The heart is a muscular organ about the size of a fist. It is located between the lungs, behind the breastbone, which protects it. The heart is hollow and made up of four chambers. The top two chambers are called atria. There is a left atrium and a right atrium. The bottom two chambers are called ventricles. There is a left ventricle and a right ventricle. The heart is a pump, one of the most effective and reliable pumps known. The average adult heart pumps blood at the rate of approximately 5 liters a minute. This is equal to roughly 7,200 liters each day. Over an average lifetime, it could fill more than three super tankers with blood. The heart's pumping action is commonly referred to as the heartbeat. One heartbeat is the complete cardiac cycle of coordinated actions that the heart performs to pump blood. Blood circulation through the heart begins with deoxygenated blood from the body filling the right atrium. Then the right atrium contracts, forcing blood into the right ventricle and filling it. Valves in the heart prevent blood from flowing back into the chambers when the heart is at rest. When the right ventricle contracts, blood is sent to the lungs where it releases carbon dioxide, one of the waste products removed from the body's cells, and takes on oxygen. This oxygenated blood returns from the lungs to the heart, filling the left atrium. When the left atrium contracts, it fills the left ventricle, the largest chamber of the heart. Contraction of the left ventricle pumps oxygenated blood to the body's cells where it delivers oxygen and nutrients and collects carbon dioxide and waste products. The deoxygenated blood returns to the heart and the cycle begins again. This process repeats about 60 to 100 times a minute or 100,000 times in one day that's approximately 35 million heartbeats per year and more than 2.5 billion heartbeats in an average lifetime. And what causes the heart to beat is electricity. The heart is composed of two types of cells, electrical and myocardial or muscle cells. Muscle cells are responsible for the heart's pumping action and electrical cells are responsible for generating and conducting the electrical current that stimulates the muscle cells to contract. These electrical cells, both the ones that generate electrical current and the ones that conduct it throughout the heart, 
make up the cardiac conduction system. The cardiac conduction system consists of a number of components, including the sinoatrial or SA node, the atrial ventricular or AV node, the bundle of His, the left and right bundle branches, and the Purkinje fibers. In a normal adult heart, the SA node, located near the top of the right atrium, generates an electrical impulse at the rate of 60 to 100 times a minute. This node is the heart's pacemaker, and the impulses it generates travel throughout the conduction system and govern the heart's rhythm. The AV node also functions as a backup pacemaker and can generate a heartbeat of 40 to 60 beats per minute. Under normal circumstances, the node with the fastest rate serves as the dominant pacemaker of the heart. If, for some reason, the SA node failed to generate an impulse of 60 to 100 times per minute, the AV node would take over and impulses would be conducted in the 40 to 60 beats per minute range. An electrocardiogram, or ECG, records these electrical impulses, providing valuable information about the heart's functioning. Sensors, called electrodes, are placed on the skin to detect the heart's electrical activity. An ECG can be inscribed on ruled paper or displayed on a cardiac monitor. Now let's examine a single impulse as it travels from the SA node through the conduction system. First, the impulse from the SA node arrives at the atria, causing them to contract. This contraction occurs almost immediately after the impulse is sent. Then the impulse travels to the AV node located where the atria join the ventricles. The AV node delays the impulse to allow the blood to flow from the atria into the ventricles. This delay also helps prevent conduction of any extremely rapid atrial rhythms. From the AV node, the impulse travels down the bundle of His in the intraventricular septum, pass into both left and right bundle branches and through the Purkinje fibers, and finally enter into the ventricular muscle tissue itself. Once the electrical impulse travels down the conduction pathways, the left and right ventricles contract nearly simultaneously. Once the contraction is over and the blood has been pumped, the heart relaxes and expands until the next impulse causes it to contract and beat once more, over and over and over. There are three types of blood vessels, arteries, veins, and capillaries. Altogether, there are about 60,000 miles of blood vessels in the body. The largest blood vessel, the aorta, is nearly the diameter of a garden hose. The smallest, capillaries, are one-tenth the thickness of a human hair. A person's blood pressure is the measurement of the force of the blood circulating through these vessels. Arteries carry oxygen-rich blood from the heart, first through the aorta, then to arteries leading to all the cells of the body. Arteries are elastic, which enables them to constrict and relax. Along with the powerful contraction of the left ventricle, this motion helps move blood through the arteries. Arterial blood is bright red. Veins carry deoxygenated blood and waste products back to the heart. Muscle contractions throughout the body help push blood through the veins back into the heart. Valves inside veins prevent the backflow of blood. Capillaries are the smallest blood vessels. Oxygenated blood flows away from the heart to capillaries from arterioles, tiny arteries branching off of larger arteries. The walls of capillaries are only one cell thick. This allows oxygen and nutrients to pass from the blood to the body's cells for nourishment 
and for carbon dioxide and waste products to move into the blood for removal. Deoxygenated blood travels back to the heart from the capillaries through tiny veins called venules and empty into larger veins. Eventually, this deoxygenated blood is returned to the right atrium of the heart through both the superior and inferior vena cava. For thousands of years, blood was the mysterious fluid that somehow gave life. Now we know how. The average adult has about five quarts of blood circulating through their body. This is approximately 8% of the average body's total weight. Blood has four components, plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. About 55% of blood is plasma, the largest component of blood. Plasma is a light straw color and is more than 90% water. Blood is mostly plasma because all the other blood components float in it. Besides the red and white blood cells and platelets, plasma also carries other substances like nutrients, proteins, electrolytes, hormones, respiratory gases, and fibrinogen, which is used to clot blood. Red blood cells, called erythrocytes, are what make blood red. Although red blood cells are small, about 7 microns wide and 2 microns thick, they are very efficient because of their numbers. Erythrocytes are concave on both sides, giving them a large surface area. Each erythrocyte is composed of about 280 million hemoglobin molecules. And each hemoglobin molecule can carry 4 oxygen molecules. So, each red blood cell can carry roughly a billion oxygen molecules, and there are approximately 5 million red blood cells in one cubic milliliter of blood. This amounts to over 35 trillion red blood cells per person, with a total combined surface area of about 3,820 square meters. That's 2,000 times more surface area than the body's total external surface area. White blood cells, called leukocytes, are bodyguards. Their job is to protect the body against infections and tissue damage by destroying harmful bacteria and viruses. There are 5 to 10,000 white blood cells per cubic milliliter of blood, far fewer than red blood cells but leukocytes have the ability to travel freely from blood vessels to body tissues using the circulation system like a freeway to converge at infection sites. Platelets, called thrombocytes, are round or oval discs about 3 microns in size. There are approximately 130 to 400,000 platelets in a cubic milliliter of blood. Platelets protect the body by forming clots to stop blood loss and help repair tissue damage. Like white blood cells, platelets can travel freely through the circulation system to areas of injury. There they block blood flow by sticking to each other and to the edges of the injury, entangling with fibers made from fibrinogen. Like blood vessels, lymph vessels range throughout the body and organs. Lymph vessels collect and transport lymph fluid. Lymph fluid is made up mostly of excess fluid the cells have taken from blood called interstitial fluid. It's also made up of fat absorbed from the small intestine and a type of white blood cell called lymphocyte. Like other white blood cells, Lymphocytes find and destroy disease-causing agents, but most lymphocytes travel through the lymphatic system instead of the systemic blood system. Larger lymph vessels are like veins in that they have valves inside to prevent the backflow of lymph fluid. Lymph vessels travel to lymph nodes. 
lymph nodes act as centers that clean the lymph fluid of disease-causing agents. Lymph vessels eventually empty into one of two primary lymphatic ducts, the thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct. These ducts drain into the left and right subclavian veins, and the lymph fluid is finally returned to the main circulatory system.